I'm the Genius Asian. Welcome to the Genius Family. Today, I'm going to show you the quickest way to diagnose why your refrigerator is not working. The refrigerator's own power cord is short, so I am connecting it to this orange power cord to have a better demo. Then I connect the multimeter probes to the power plugs hot and neutral to measure the resistance. First, take a look at a good refrigerator. When I turn the thermostat, it shows 26 ohms going to 2 ohms to 26 to 1916 ohms. It is now 26 ohms, which indicates that I am measuring the resistances of the number of good light bulbs. If I open the freezer door, I see this 26 ohms drops to 13 ohms, indicating there is a good bulb in the freezer. When I turn the thermostat to cold, the compressor kicks in, thus it is 2 ohms. When I turn the thermostat to warmer, the compressor turns off, thus it is 26 ohms. When I press this door switch, the light bulbs are disconnected, thus the resistance went up to 1900 ohms. Now let's see a situation when I turn the thermostat, the resistance still is always showing 3 ohms. This means that no matter how I change the thermostat, including turning to the off position, the compressor is always running. Obviously, the thermostat is stuck on the closed setting. If you want to continue to trace where the problem is, you will need to open the thermostat. Another kind of faulty thermostat issue can be seen when I turn the thermostat and it shows 26 ohms, but when I press the door switch, it changes to 1800, high resistance. This indicates that the thermostat is stuck on the open setting or that the compressor is broken. To continue to trace where the problem is, you will need to either open the thermostat or check the compressor. Measuring resistance from the plug is a quick and safe way to troubleshoot the problem. This Kenmore made by Whirlpool refrigerator provides a set of 26 to 1900 ohms reading. Let's check another newer fridge made by Whirlpool. We have a good refrigerator with 5 ohms and 900,000 ohms reading. When pressing the door switch, the reading does not change. Notice the light bulb is an LED type connecting to the LED control board instead of an incandescent light bulb connected directly to the 120 volt power. So when we replace the incandescent bulb with an LED bulb, we no longer see the resistance of the LED bulb from the plug because the LED control board is connected to the plug, not the LED bulb. In this example, we still see the resistance of the compressor as 3 5 ohms, but we no longer see the previous reading of 26 ohms that came with the incandescent bulb. What if we replace the mechanical thermostat with an electronic one? This is a new Samsung refrigerator. See? It has an electronic thermostat. We see the resistance is about 200,000 ohms and continues to get lower. Opening the door does not change the reading. Since the resistance is changing, it must have some capacitor. Let's discharge it with a screwdriver. Now the resistance becomes 80,000 ohms. Sometimes later it became 4 million ohms. If we flip the polarity, one way is 1.8 million ohms. After flipping it, it is 9 million ohms. So with newer electronic LED lights or thermostats, measuring the resistance from the plug does not provide much useful information, but it does not mean it is harder to debug a new refrigerator. In fact, it could be easier because the display may show some error messages and it is likely you can set the newer refrigerator into test mode to help you diagnose the problem. So at this point, without removing any screws, we have narrowed down the faulty areas. If you don't want to spend more time, you may follow my other video to quickly force the refrigerator to produce coldness by doing a short circuit. Without removing screws, based on your situation, 
you can also perform some other basic checks. First notice if the light is on or not. If the light is not on, it may be a very easy problem. There are three possibilities. One, plug a lamp into the outlet. If the light will not turn on, then check the circuit breaker. Two, if the light does turn on, meaning there is power at the outlet, then the refrigerator's light bulb could be bad. Check the bulb visually, or check at the plug with a multimeter while pressing the door opening sensor, or measure the resistance of the bulb. Three, if the light bulb is good, then part of the wiring inside the refrigerator is bad. You could trace the wires with a voltage meter, but we like to be safer measuring the resistance with the power off. Connect one multimeter probe to the neutral plug tip and the other probe to the two contacts in the bulb socket. One contact should be conducting very low resistance. The other contact should have larger resistance. If both contacts are conducting or none of the two contacts are conducting, then you need to trace the wire. Repeat the same process for the hot wire. Next, we want to check if electricity reaches the control unit. For this mechanical unit, when we open the door, we may hear a click sound. For this digital unit, we can see the display. We should adjust the temperature to see if the refrigerator will turn on. Next, we clean the condenser coils, open the tow grill, brush, and vacuum. You should clean the coils every year anyway, so it does not hurt to clean, and your refrigerator may just start working again. Watch my other video to make DIY tools to clean your coils. Once you've performed the easiest test, if it still does not solve your problem, we can check other components that have a high probability of failure. Moving parts, such as motors and fans, have high probability of failure. This refrigerator actually has six motors, but only three of them, the condenser motor, evaporator fan motor, and the compressor, are running often. The evaporator fan motor is located behind the back panel in the freezer. If this motor fails, then it cannot blow cold air from the freezer into the refrigerator. You will have a situation where the freezer is cold, but not the fridge. To open the back panel, remove all the screws. Still, the rack supports are in the way, so remove the rack supports. Now the back panel can be pulled out. Remove one wire from the evaporator fan motor. Measure the resistance. It is 49 ohms, which means good. When the evaporator is working, the evaporator is cold and the fan is blowing cold air to the fridge. If this fan motor failed, then your fridge will be warm. While waiting for your new part, you may store food in the freezer, or you may store some bottles of water in the freezer. When the bottles are frozen, then move them to the fridge to keep the fridge cool. Next, we will show you what you can do if the condenser fan's motor is bad or if the control board or the compressor is bad. First check if the electricity reaches the fridge. Assume the electricity is reaching the fridge, but it is not cooling down and it's not making any of its usual noises. Open the back cover. You will see two main components. One is the compressor, the other is the condenser fan. They connect to the same pair of wires. The compressor is running fine if this tube is hot, while the other tube is not hot. The condenser fan is working if the fan turns. There are three possibilities. Situation one, the compressor is running, but the condenser fan is not running. See the pair of white and pink wires. They go to both the condenser fan and the compressor. Since the compressor is running, it means electricity reaches this section. We need to check the condenser fan motor. The condenser fan motor often fails because it works very hard to remove heat. Try this tab to remove the connector. Connect the meter probes to the motor and measure the resistance. If the circuit is open, then you have a bad motor and need to order a new condenser fan motor and replace the old one. While you are waiting for the part, you should use a regular fan to blow air onto the condenser coil. Without this fan, the compressor will be too hot. We can use a box to seal the gaps around the fan. Cover and seal the back panel space to have proper convection to cool the condenser coils. 
When you connect the meter probes to the motor and measure the resistance, if it is not an open circuit such as this one, 135 ohm, then you should check the connection or wiring. There is a disconnection somewhere. Situation two, the compressor is not running and the condenser fan is not running. Pry this tab to remove the fan motor connector. Connect the meter probes to the motor and measure the resistance. You see this one? It is 135 ohm, so the fan motor is good. Connect the meter probes to the connector. This measures the compressor. It is 1.8 ohm. The compressor is good as well. Since both the motor and compressor are good, we need to check to see if voltage is being delivered to the connectors. Connect the meter probes to the motor connectors and measure the voltage. See, there is no voltage. So it is not this section that is the problem. Next, we will trace to the control box to see why it failed to deliver electricity. But you may not have the time to do this, or you may not want to if you already ordered a new refrigerator. In that case, I will show you our first short circuit to make the refrigerator running again in two minutes. The idea is to connect these two wires directly to the AC power. Plug in and turn on the power strip, and now it is running. Close the back panel, since the fan only works if it is closed. Since the temperature control is bypassed, I use a timer to turn the power off, or I set a cell phone alert to remind me myself to turn it off. Putting ice bottles in the fridge can also help stabilize the temperature and reduce how often it needs to be turned on and off. Situation number three. The compressor is not running, but the condenser fan is running. When the compressor is not around two ohms resistance, we can test the start relay unit. To remove the start relay cover, you need to lift this tab while pressing the body down to pivot around the tab. We notice three components, start relay, overload, and capacitor. The hot pink wire goes to the overload. The neutral white wire goes to both the start relay and the capacitor. This wire will connect to the run pin on the compressor. The blue wire connects the capacitor, and the relay will connect to the start pin on the compressor. Use a screwdriver to discharge the capacitor. Before any removal, it is a good practice to take a photo so that you know how to put them back together. Pry off the relay. Notice the three pins on the compressor. The center pin is called common, the left is run, the right is the start pin. If the start relay fails or the capacitor fails, I can make a short circuit to connect the run and start bypassing the failure component. Of course, this will increase the load and maybe shorten the lifespan of the compressor. Measure the start relay resistance. Between start and common, write two pins is 4.2 ohm. Between run and common, left two pins, 2.2 .2 ohm. Leftmost to rightmost, start and run, which is the sum of the two values, 6.4 ohms. This is a working compressor. If compressor measurements are good, but it is not running, then the start relay is bad. To measure the start relay, remove one wire. Insert the probes into the two holes to measure the resistance. It is 5.4 ohms, a good value. I turn over the relay. It is the same value because this is a PTC relay. Note that some people suggest shaking the start relay to see if it has a rattling sound, meaning it has failed. That works for those kinds of start relay with coils, but it will not work for this type of PTC relay. For a PTC relay, when you measure the resistance, it is the same resistance if you flip it upside down. In fact, the resistance between any of the two metal connectors on the left to any of the two metal connectors on the right should be the same value. If your relay is a different kind, for example with a circuit board inside, you will need a different way to test. If you have a bad relay, you may short the two contacts, but only do so for a temporary short period because it may overload the compressor. Next, pry off the overload at the bottom. It is normal for the overload to have a rattling sound. So if a relay has a built-in overload, you can't use shaking to detect a faulty part.
Normally, the overload is zero ohms. It only cuts off the circuit when overloaded. If the overload is bad, you can short the two contacts. You should use a timer to manually turn on the power to reduce overload probability, unless you are just waiting for your new refrigerator. So far, we have quickly identified problems and bypassed four faulty components, that is, faulty fan motor, relay, overload, and capacitor. There are two situations, however, that will take a longer time to deal with. If the compressor is running, but these two tubes have no temperature difference, you may have leaked refrigerant. This can be fixed, but will take more time. If the compressor does not run, and between run and start is open circuit, then there is no need to waste time fixing the compressor. Borrow some ice from your neighbor, use your refrigerator as a cooler, and wait for a new compressor or new refrigerator. When the lower section is not our problem, let's keep tracing to the control box. Remove the two screws that fasten the control box to the ceiling. Remove the two control knobs. Remove the plate. Remove the two screws on the frame. Remove this screw to release the damper control arm. Since the meter's probes are not long enough to trace the pink hot wire, we use this power cord to extend the length. Connect the condenser fan's pink connector wire to one end of the power cord. Connect the control board contact to the other end of the power cord. Since there is continuity, this red wire connects to the condenser fan. The same way we can verify the black wire connects to the hot power source. We measure the resistance between hot and neutral at the plug. It is 25 ohms. Now we can short the black and red wires. This is the same as connecting the compressor to the plug hot wire. Let's verify this. We measure the resistance between hot and neutral at the plug. It became 2 ohms. Now we turn on the power. The compressor is running. This is like our previous short circuit. But it is better we continue tracing until we find the real problem. There are two components in the control box, a control board and the thermostat. Remove two screws to see the control board better. The diagram on the board shows a relay. We can either measure the output of the relay or its input. The input, which is the output of the thermostat, is easy to measure. Remove one wire from the thermostat, measure the resistance of the thermostat. If it is an open circuit like this, something may be wrong. Turn the coldness control to both maximum and minimum. If it is still an open circuit, use a screwdriver to this slot to manually lift the contact level. See? This is still an open circuit, so the thermostat is bad. To verify, we short the output of the thermostat. Now the compressor is running. This proves the control board is working, only the thermostat is bad. Share this with people who you know that need it. Leave your own Genius Tips in the comment section below. Don't forget, I'm the Genius Asian. Subscribe for more useful videos.